You're listening to The World at Eight with Lynn Mozart. The World at Eight, the number one in nationalist news. If you can give generously to our own animal charities. This time of year is especially difficult as animals don't know it's a human celebration and all the spare money is going down to food and prezzies. Top of the list for my New Year donations are Animal Aid, the Blue Cross Foundation, Spanner, which is S-P-A-N-A, the Donkey Sanctuary, World Wildlife Fund, HSI UK, IFAW, which is the International Fund for Animal Welfare, I believe, and our Compassion in, and Compassion in World Farming and Network for Animals. Remember, once the animals go, we will not be far behind. Highlights of the news today, Friday, 19th of December, 2014. Three arrested in raid on Manchester Slave Factory. Up to 200 predators are sharing child abuse images in Staffordshire. Teenager 17, who was sexually exploited by a group of 10 men in Birmingham, is pregnant. British girls as young as 14 becoming jihadi brides of Islamic State fighters in Syria. German leader denounces anti-immigrant surge. Spain, Islamic State, seven held in raids on women recruiters. Austrian Muslims accuse government of rights violations. Pakistan, army kills 32 Taliban militants four days after Peshawar school slaughter. Russia's economic turmoil is already spreading to companies in the West and many are bracing for an even bigger blow to earnings. Thought for the day, the diversity deficit, why, where and who cares. And finally, two for one day Friday. Now, before we start the last World Date before 2015, I would like to thank all our listeners who have been faithful to our news, despite all our ups and downs this last year. Next year, there will be a World Date Facebook page sporting my Unity logo, and I hope that all our listeners and commenters will join us. I will notify you when it's set up. Please note, although still resolutely patriotic, the news is an open podcast and not directly aligned to any one party, person or ethos, except nationalism. We will be on air on January the 2nd, 2015, God willing, and the creek don't rise, or I don't win the lottery. UK news. Three arrested in raid on Manchester slave factory. British police arrested three suspected slave masters after a raid on a factory freed 20 Eastern European migrants, paid £25, that is $39 or 31 euros, to work 80-hour weeks on Monday. Police said that the factory in Manchester in northwest England was producing pictures and frames for major high street companies and had contracts worth millions of pounds. The men and women working in the factory have told us that they were subjected to physical and verbal assaults at the hands of their employers and forced to work more than 80 hours before ending up with around £25 for their week's work, said Detective Inspector James Faulkner. This is a typical example of how modern slavery can work in the UK. The migrants were given accommodation, a house with cramped, terrible conditions, where they slept three or four to a room before being taken to the factory to work over 12 hours a day, the police reported. The factory owners paid the immigrants around £125 for 80 hours work, but deducted up to £100 for the accommodation and travel to work. This leaves the men and women effectively working for pennies, while simultaneously ensuring they remain reliant on the people enslaving them, Faulkner added. Three men aged 51, 43 and 40 were arrested on conspiracy to require another person to perform forced or compulsory labour and conspiracy to commit trafficking offences. The raid was part of an ongoing anti-trafficking effort by Greater Manchester Police called Operation Retriever. An earlier raid in November arrested 15 people and charged five for their involvement in a trafficking ring that sold a pregnant woman into a fake marriage and attempted to trick her into having an abortion. World at eight. Slavery works anywhere where there is greed, no conscience and a third world mentality. The Brits got rid of their workhouses a hundred years ago, only to have them all back again along with leprosy, smallpox, typhoid and probably Ebola. Wonderful immigration, isn't it? Up to 200 predators are sharing child abuse images in Staffordshire. Up to 200 predators across Staffordshire are sharing images of child sex abuse online at any one time. Staffordshire Police has revealed the shocking figure after it emerged that there have been 41 sex offenders arrested in two separate operations in recent months. 
Using intelligence from a variety of sources, including police forces abroad, officers have monitored suspects and then seized computers for forensic analysis. Evidence recovered from hard drives has shown images of young people actually being abused. Officers say it's part of a wider problem of child sexual exploitation in Staffordshire, with young people also being groomed online and on the streets. In Staffordshire County Council area alone, 43 youngsters are currently known to be at risk of CSE. In Stoke-on-Trent last year, there were 32 cases. World date. The so-called customers or perverts would not have altered in the last few years. Just as sad, but could be younger market now with mobile phones, etc. Altogether, not good. Teenager 17 who was sexually exploited by a group of 10 men in Birmingham is pregnant. A 17-year-old girl who was sexually exploited by 10 men is pregnant and claims one of the men is the father of her unborn child. Last month, 10 men were given injunctions by Birmingham City Council barring them from contacting the teenager or other under-18s they didn't know after a judge ruled they had been sexually exploiting her. But it has emerged during court hearings into the case that the teenager is pregnant and claims Safraz Riaz, one of the men who was given an order to stay away, is the father. The girl had described 32-year-old Riaz as her boyfriend during proceedings at a high court in London and said he had fathered her child. The council applied to the high court for civil injunctions against the men to protect the girl from being exploited. Mr Justice Kaheen said last month he was satisfied that each of the men had sexually exploited the girl and made orders barring them from contacting the 17-year-old until she turned 18 and any other under 18s they didn't know. He made orders against Mohammed Anjam, Omar Ahmed, Nazim Khan, Mohammed Javed, Shah Alam, Sajid Hussein, Ramin Aziz, Imran Udin, Mansour Ahmed and Safraz Riaz. World at Eight Exploitation is the plight word the Brits use when Muslims rape and abuse children. Riaz should have all his money taken to support this half-caste baby, as British taxpayers should not. British girls as young as 14 becoming jihadi brides of Islamic State fighters in Syria. British girls as young as 14 are being helped to join Islamic State fighters in Syria as jihadi brides in increasing numbers by London-based facilitators, the standard has learned. Teenagers are being helped with applying for passports, given funding and sometimes even accompanied to the region after being groomed online. Pockets of East London in particular are becoming hotbeds for organised groups of men and women helping young ISIS supporters to get to the Syrian conflict zone the standard has learnt. Harris Rafiq, an expert at British counter-terrorism think tank the Quilliam Foundation, says the organisation is aware of groups working across London, but particularly in the east of the capital. He said the average age is being reduced. Some of the girls getting out there are only 14. There are people here who have facilitated passports. Girls who are under a certain age are being accompanied by an adult over 18, usually a woman, to go help them. Help them apply for a passport and even take them out there. The main areas they are working out are in East London. He added these are so-called facilitators are becoming more proficient. It comes as the Evening Standard yesterday revealed a girl of 15 was rescued from joining the conflict in Syria after Met counter-terrorism officers stopped the plane she was on as it was taxiing down the runway at Heathrow. The girl from Tower Hamlets had brought a ticket to Istanbul without the knowledge of her parents. But she was prevented from travelling to join Islamist fighters after Scotland Yard detectives learnt of her plans earlier this month. World at eight. Love it, don't you? These girls are Muslim and ethnic, not British or English, and they are a far cry from the poor abused white females of the Exploitation Brigade. At least these girls get married and clearly want to leave the country. Let them go, but don't let them back. European news. German leader denounces anti-immigrant surge. With visible and focal far-right protests against foreigners swelling in Germany in recent weeks, Chancellor Angela Merkel forcefully denounced the demonstrations on Monday, affirming that the country has both a special obligation and a desire to welcome anyone in need of sanctuary. More than 150,000 people sought asylum in Germany in the first 11 months of this year, many of them refugees fleeing the conflict in Syria, straining the country's ability to house them. In addition, a looming labour shortage means Germany is increasingly attracting migrants to work there. Merkel says, 
There is a freedom of assembly in Germany, but there is no place here for incitement and lies about people who come to us from other countries. Ms Merkel told reporters on Monday, hours before a group opposing alleged Islamization, held its ninth weekly protest in Dresden, where attendance has swelled from a few hundred to 15,000 this week. World at eight. Merkel can say what she likes, but Germany and Austria do not pay benefits to their immigrants like we do over here. What doesn't affect the EU purse doesn't hurt her, though, does it? Spain, Islamic State, seven held in raids on women recruiters. Seven people have been detained in Spain and Morocco on raids targeting a network recruiting women to join Islamic State in Syria and Iraq, officials say. Four people were held after raids in the two Spanish enclaves of Ceuta and Melilla in North Africa. There was another arrest in Barcelona. Moroccan authorities picked up two others in Castillos, near Ceuta. Spain's enclaves are seen as particularly attractive to jihadists. Ceuta and Melilla are Europe's only land borders with Africa, offering a potential route to conflict zones. Among the seven arrested were four women and a minor, Spanish authorities said on Tuesday. The Interior Ministry said that all were accused of forming part of a network that recruited and sent women to IS in the border areas of Syria and Iraq. Similar raids were carried out in September, where authorities said the suspected leader of a recruitment cell was detained in Melilla. A 14-year-old girl and a woman were arrested in the enclave a month earlier on suspicion of trying to join IS. World date, let them go. They're no use in Europe, are they? Austrian Muslims accuse government of rights violations. Austria's Muslim organisation said the government violated the rights of an estimated 600,000 Muslims in the country after officials sent a proposed law, dubbed the Islamic Bill, to Parliament without first consulting the Muslim community. The government has sent the bill to Parliament without considering our viewpoint, Muda Kuja, founder of Austrian Muslims Initiative, said at a press conference Monday. The draft had to be examined during the Austrian Muslims Initiative meeting on December the 21st. Kuja said Muslims are considered second-class citizens in Austria and the government does not take into account the existing laws on religious freedoms and the UN laws on freedom of religion and belief. According to the bill, employing preachers from abroad would be prohibited. Imams would be instead trained at Austrian universities. Oh, they like it. Cur currently, some 300 imams work in the country, including 65 Turkish preachers. The proposed legislation also contains a new overseas funding ban. This bill is not a security or police law, Kuja said. About 600,000 Muslims and future generations are concerned. It is unacceptable that the government sent the bill to a parliament without consulting the Muslim community, Austria-Turkish Islamic Union President Fatih Karades said. World at eight. I think you can guess what my thoughts are on this one. Same as yours. No such thing as an Austrian Muslim, like there was no such group as German Jews or Polish Jews in the 30s and 40s. They were classed by their religion as Jews. So Muslims are Muslims, whatever country they adopt. And as Muslims, not Christians, according to me, they have no rights outside of an Islamic society. Just as Europe is losing its rights to practically anything nowadays. World News. Pakistan Army kills 32 Taliban militants, four days after Peshawar school slaughter. The Pakistani army killed 32 militants in an ambush in a remote valley near the Afghan border, the military said on Friday, and 27 in other clashes four days after a Taliban massacre of children at a school. The ambush took place overnight in the northwestern Tira Valley in the Khyber Agency, one of the main smuggling routes for arms and insurgents crossing between Afghanistan and Pakistan. Security forces ambushed the moving group. Fleeing terrorists left bodies of their accomplices, the military said in a statement. The army is fighting offensive against Pakistani Taliban insurgents in Khyber as well as the North Waristan region, which is also on the Afghan border. But the pace of operations has picked up since Pakistani Taliban suicide attackers killed 131 schoolchildren, nine teachers and a soldier at a military-run high school in the northwestern city of Peshawar on Tuesday. The assault was the deadliest militant attack ever in Pakistan. Footage of terrified children and classrooms awash with blood has provoked a wave of revulsion in the country, mostly inured to daily violence. World date. What occurred in Peshawar was nothing short of a war crime. These children were Muslim children killed by their own in a sectarian and political warfare. The one person these bastards burned alive was a young female teacher.
Russia's economic turmoil is already spreading to companies in the West and many are bracing for an even bigger blow to earnings. This is according to CNN Money. A currency crisis and plunging oil prices have slammed the economy and damaged consumer confidence. If oil prices fail to recover, Russian GDP is expected to shrink by almost 5% next year. That's bad news for plenty of Western companies with heavy exposure to Russia. The currency collapse has driven up prices for Russians. Some shoppers have been rushing to buy before prices go any higher, but ultimately spending on many Western consumer brands will slow. And the wild swings in the ruble have already prompted the companies such as IKEA, GM and Apple to suspend some businesses in Russia. Here are the Western brands taking the biggest hits from the Russian crisis. Ford. It's been a tough year for automakers in Russia. Car sales are down 12% so far this year, according to the Association of European Businesses. Ford has been one of the hardest hit. Its sales slumped 40% in the first 11 months of the year, according to the AEB. Volkswagen. The group's main VW car brand saw Russian sales fall 20% between January and November, compared to the same period in 2013, AEB data shows. Carlsberg. Carlsberg CABGY is heavily dependent on sales in Russia, where it is the biggest brewer supplying local brands such as Baltica. Its shares are down more than 20% this year. Adidas. Adidas is one of the biggest retail brands in the country, with 1,100 stores. Chief Executive Herbert Hainer said last month that weak consumer sentiment and the falling ruble was hurting its business. BP. Crumbling oil prices and sanctions have dealt a double blow to oil majors in Russia. BP owns a large stake in Rosneft, Russia's biggest oil company. BP shares are trading down 17% this year. Exxon Mobil made an Arctic oil discovery with Rosneft earlier this year, but the firm can't push ahead with the project until sanctions imposed over the Ukraine crisis are lifted. Total. The firm shell plans for a shale exploration venture with Russia's Ludicoil due to the sanctions. McDonald's. Earlier this year, Russian officials forced the fast food giant to close 12 restaurants because of sanitary violations. The move was widely believed to be politically motivated. Danone. French food conglomerate Danone is a big player in Russia. The market represents 11% of the group's annual turnover and was the top-ranking country by sales in 2013. Siemens. Siemens' revenue from the country dropped about 14% in fiscal 2014, compared with the previous year. European banks. European banks had $155.9 billion in outstanding loans to Russia at the end of June. US banks have lent a relatively modest $26.1 billion. World date. This will not end well, and the EU should think very carefully about their next move. Thought for the day, the diversity deficit, why, where and who cares? There's been so much to comment on this week, from the awful killings in Pakistan to the almost continual killing of the NHS by our media. Haven't they learnt that there is such a thing as negative reporting? However, on a completely different planet of reporting was the TV thingy on the diversity deficit, to which I've added why, where and who cares? So just before Christmas, the media have decided to try and get us all lovey-dovey over why there aren't enough black or brown people, or yellow or red or green, at the top of corporations or in Parliament. Well, that question can be answered straight out of the anti-diversity cookbook, in that England, up to a few years ago, was a white country with a white religion and just a few settled and integrated West Indians and Asians. But that was not enough for the EU, the CK plan or the New World Order. They thought there's a country running quite well with a few manageable migrants, but it's running too well. So we'll bugger that one up for good. And they did. So amidst the NHS crisis, not helped by us refusing to train our own nurses, but quite happy to import non-English speaking peoples and or train them up, put the greatest people pressure in certain areas from migrants straight off the banana boat or lorry and then blame it on the ever dwindling elderly white population who regularly get it in the neck for not dropping dead and leaving their houses to the Asians next door. The media are as usual ignoring the root of most of our problems and are now declaring that there should be more ethnics at the top. My sick bucket is away off here so I must type quickly before I bath. Just look at the types running around after the lorries and imagine them five years from now in this country. Let me know if you spot the odd prime ministers, medical specialists or scientists amongst that lot, won't you? And also let ITV knew as they seem a bit obsessed with that subject.
Now, the interviewer was a Ms. White, who is in fact a Ms. Black, and the one thing left out was that you have to be either black or Asian to become a newscaster, reporter, or even weather person nowadays. So that's got that covered. The plain fact is that most, if not all, our most recent migrants in the last 20 years have not been employable material outside the back end of a hospital or the front end of a coffee house. Eat that. The Muslims who get their kids educated to standards either go into the family business of shops, taxes, sexual grooming, drugs, law or finance. The Indians the same without the sexual grooming. The Chinese go for law, music or running the family restaurants. The Eastern Europeans go for criminal activities and prostitution and drugs, if not educated, cleaners, carers or anything that does for money. The Poles especially are good at having child benefits given them for children, not even taking advantage of our free education system. Isn't that wonderful? So I don't see a plethora of CEOs coming up in the future. And who wants, if you're a Muslim, to work for a corporation that is more than likely has an Indian who owns it? And when a Muslim owns something very large, it is usually open only to employ Muslims. Ethnic restaurants only ever employ their own. And up to the last 30 years, we used to do the same. But fate has taken most of those jobs away, all of our fishing has gone, our farmers are beset by problems which arise from the very well-paid EU policies, that is about £11.2 billion last year, which decimate our countryside and animals. We don't do steel, manufacturing of luxury goods, manufacturing of necessary goods, providing food for our own without the help of repacking in Thailand, and a thousand other things we British used to be exceptionally good at, before the unions, the EU and immigration. Fact. But now we are expected to produce brilliant ethnics when in truth the ones that are don't want to work in British industry, although they might saunter their way into our Parliament, where they're only apparently 4% ethnics. What a shame. Look at the Japanese Parliament and the Chinese and the Indian and the Pakistani Parliaments. Where are the Europeans? I will tell you, they got rid of us and we should get rid of them as well as the EU. Our country is now a watering hole for wildebeest filled with crocodiles and we are the wildebeest. Why on God's green earth should we worry in this country about what colour some idiot is at the top of the food chain? Well, the only reason I can think of is that, as we all know, people, well, people other than Brits, look after their own. So it will be good night, Irene, for the rest of ours and us. We should be thinking of how to get back our industries and farming without giving out jobs to foreigners at all. I did notice that although I had to turn off the programme because I was going to do an injury to the television, they harped on the problems with the white EU migrants instead of all the fairly useless and recently arrived Africans, North Africans, Arabs and Asians. Now the EU and the Brits have been advertising jobs and houses for Poles and for other and others for 20 years, and are now seeing the fruition of this wonderfully stupid act just now. Hordes of them everywhere, rather like the sodding Nepalese. We need a Pied Piper of Hampshire, or come out of the EU promptly. Let's face it, if we pay an exorbitant amount of money just to have our country taken over, as if you think it is just the Poles who come in, then you are in fairyland. All the world and its mother come in through France, which is an EU country with no travel restrictions, except the poor buggers at Calais trying to pacify them. The EU has constricted British industry and farming and opened their doors for foreigners to come over here. Where do you think the Muslims from Africa go? Most of them over here. And we managed to lose 260,000 of the buggers officially, which means around 500,000 unofficially are roaming around, working or claiming benefits or impregnating our girls, which also brings them money. It's a sad fact of life that we in the West deem everyone to be equal when they're not. Africa has remained the dark continent, not because of white colonisation, but because the average African is not civilised or educated. Asians and Chinese have the capacity to make money anywhere from anything, but making money is not necessarily being at the top of a corporation, or taking responsibility for other people's working lives, or governing a country. Hell, they cannot even govern their own sodding countries, so why give them a chance over here? So I'm gibbering into my pre-crimbo mulled wine. Well, not really, can't stand mulled wine. But the people of this country should, starting in the new year, really think long and hard over what they want or need, not what strangers or foreigners, however nice they may be, want or need. England for the English, with a few exceptions, is my motto. Viva la cosmopolitan and damn diversity and the multicultural hellholes. And finally, two for one day Friday. 
After his Christmas party, Dave woke up with an awful hangover and was completely unable to recall any of the previous night. He looked at his wife. Please tell me I didn't do anything embarrassing last night. She raised an eyebrow. You were worse than embarrassing. You completely insulted your board of directors and your manager, Phil. He's a pretentious idiot. Piss on him. You did, actually, all over his suit and ended up getting fired. Well, fuck him, John mumbled. I did, and you're back in work on Monday. And a man went into Macquarie Street in Sydney, having seen an advert for a gynaecologist assistant. Knowing that nowadays job advertisers aren't able to discriminate against the applicant's gender, he was very interested, so he went in and asked the secretary for details. She retrieved the file and read to him. This job entails preparing ladies for the gynaecologist. You'll be responsible for helping them out of their underwear, laying them down and carefully washing their private areas, applying shaving foam to the necessary parts and removing all unwanted foliage. And finally, you'll be required to rub in soothing oils in preparation for the gynaecologist's examination. Then she told him the annual salary is $100,000 a year. And if you're interested, you'll have to go to Darwin. My goodness, exclaimed the man. Is that where the job is? No, she answered. No, that's where the end of the queue is. You've been listening to The World at Eight. I am Lynn Mozar, and I and the team at World at Eight and Radio Britain wish you all a very happy Christmas and a prosperous and peaceful New Year. <laughs>